you very much for being with us. Please tell me your name and your affiliation. Thanks, David. My name is Michael Gord. I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO of the GDA Group of Companies. We're an investment and capital markets company that has diversified exposure across the blockchain capital market. How did you get into the blockchain space? I was fortunate to have seen the Wired article that came out in 2012 as a first year student at McGill University that made me consider the potential implications of Bitcoin and that it was not necessarily a scam. It had me start going down the rabbit hole and then a few months later I decided that it was the most exciting technology in the history of the world and uh, here we are. So what drives your um backing a project or or not backing a project? Good question. Um, I think the teams are a big part of it. Do we enjoy hanging out with the people? Do we think that they are trustworthy, that their roadmap is achievable? And are they the individuals to execute on their roadmap the best and you know, to be competitive? Uh, so the team is a big part of it, and uh, traction is, is also a big part of it. If they have demonstrated their ability to execute and to create a community around their project, that's, uh, yeah, team and traction. Blockchain really is a horizontal technology that can enable a lot of improvements in, in uncorrelated sectors. Do you cover them all? Uh, do you have some specific areas that uh, in the past uh, you have focused on? Yeah, so good question. There's a lot of new niches in blockchains. We look to identify those niches and build a company to have a very clear focus and segmentation on those niches. So we started with the fungible side of the markets. And then if you consider the fungible side, you can have Bitcoins as one market, one business, or you could have altcoins, anything that's not Bitcoin. You could have protocols, you can have GameFi, you can have DeFi. Um, so there's you know different niches in the fungible side of the market. Then there's the non-fungible side of the market, which we want to have exposure in. Then I, I'm, we were talking about it before. Um, there's next generation technologies like the metaverse that are, I think, reinventing everything, uh, which we want to have exposure in. And then as far as different niches in the capital market, we want to be able to provide the full scope of, of, uh, of offerings to each one of those markets. So tell me more about uh, the metaverse. How do you see it today? Where do you see it going in two or five years? I think it is the next frontier of the internet, the next frontier of technology. Simply just to define it, I know you're, you're deeply in involved, but it is the immersive internet. It's the 3D internet, uh, where right now all internet infrastructure is two-dimensional. So you have your TV or your computer or your phone or... Uh, everything is, is flat, right? So you can create arbitrary experiences on the internet. I want a picture here, I want text here, but it's always flat infrastructure. The metaverse I want is, is three-dimensional. So it's the exact same as, as the internet. You can create, I want a couch here, I want art here, I want uh, a stage here but it's, it creates more limitless possibility because now we can just think in 3D. I would say that the fundamentally most significant value proposition of that is oh, it's going to reinvent all industries and I think it's really the ultimate GameFi experience, but the internet democratized access to communication. So if I see that you're, uh, you're a successful entrepreneur, you're an investor, and I want to reach out to you, then I can do that through in a democratized way through Twitter or through LinkedIn or through Facebook or through Instagram or through your email or through any number of mediums in the, in the internet we have today. Um, and everyone in the world has the same democratized access to send you a message. What the internet does not provide is the democratized access to showing up. So, you know, I, I, I have the good fortune of having grown up in Canada where we have the ability to go to new to countries simply and we happen to be at the same event in Monaco so we end up sitting together whereas if I was if I grew up in a country that had a very that had you know like they had sanctions 
Um, although I could perhaps add a lot of value to you, or it would, I, I would want to be sit, I would want to be sitting with you, I would not have the same democratized access to showing up, to being in Monaco uh, because of, of sanctions. So the quality of the human connection that potentially in a immersive metaverse environment we can achieve is invaluable, uh, extremely important. And this concept has been around for some time. Why do you think it is the right moment today in order to deliver on this promise? So for sure, um, with the metaverse, we would be able to have an event where someone signs in in a democratized way, whether they're in Canada or Monaco or Iran, and they'll be able to show up. And if you show up, then it's not a cold message from social media that you might or might not respond to, you're right there in, in, in front of you, potentially. So it's more, it's, you can't ignore it because they, they, they're, they're there. As far as timing, when technology is mature, the opportunity becomes much less significant. Uh, I think it's certain that the metaverse is the next frontier of the internet. The adoption curve is at the very beginning, so it hasn't reached its tipping point. Uh, so as far as timing to market, if you, you, know, you want to get in before that tipping point and uh, help to define a market instead of wait for the market to be defined. There have been technologies that created waves of enthusiasm and then a degree of disillusionment came. Um, um, an example around the metaverse of this is uh, Second Life that had a very promising trajectory for a few years and then uh, it w wasn't able to pull in and maintain the number of users active uh, as that original trajectory would have implied. So I agree with you and I understand that uh, uh, as, a, as an investor, you have to un identify the trends beforehand. What you are suggesting is that the various indicators of infrastructure, of interfaces, of developer interest are at a point where the trajectory will be sustained. Is that, uh, is that correct? I think the trajectory is inevitably going to tip because uh, years of development have been put in to get to this point where there has not been tremendous adoption yet because the technology was not at a point to bring millions of users overnight. But to bring millions of users overnight is as simple and it's perhaps sounds simpler than it is, but it really is as simple as bringing an individual like Justin Bieber or Drake to doing a concert in the metaverse, which as a result brings millions of users and all of a sudden you've got, you've got a network. Second Life was a great proof of concept, was a great case study, but because Second Life was a centralized environment, it was not possible for the Second Life creators to provide a open economy where you could earn an income as a result of your participation in Second Life. There was no ability to collect NFTs that would have value in the real world. So the all the technologies are converging now so that there can be this open economy in an open internet. You uh, compared the metaverse as a next generation internet. And one of the beautiful components of the internet has been for the past 20 years and more, not only of uh, democratized participation, but active participation. Meaning that you were not only consumer, but producer as well of content that others uh, enjoyed. I think that a great challenge, a beautiful challenge for metaverse platforms is going to be to provide tools for creators that will enable everyone to be active, to create content in these 3D environments without the learning curve that today is required from the current generation of tools. Would you agree with that? Do you think that the ease of use of the tools is a, an important component? Definitely. So, so I think we could have been talking about the internet and the internet created a, you could call it a marketing stack, value propositions for any business or any individual to, to, to use. So there's email, there's uh, search, there's CRMs, there's social, there's, you know, there's a stack of tools that became available with the internet to provide value to any individual that identified those opportunities. 
And the earlier that an individual or business did identify those opportunities and you know, the first one to get on search, first one to consider SEO, it's very valuable. Same thing with the blockchain. Uh, the blockchain has created a new marketing stack of tools for any individual or business. So there's utility coins, security coins, non-fungible coins, DAOs, liquidity farming. There, there's all these blockchain-based tools that every business, fan tokens, creator coins, can, can use to add additional value to their, to their ecosystem. Uh, the metaverse is, is gonna do the same. So what is that enables you today to act on the metaverse how are you actually executing on, on this opportunity that you have identified? So for us, I uh, segmented the NFT market into lands, metaverse lands, and then any collectible that would be displayed in lands. And we have now collectible businesses, but I, I thought that it would be a higher value proposition to start with lands, because with lands, collectibles will want to, it'll be easier to get exposure to the collectible business. So the way we wanted to start with the metaverse is focused on a vertically integrated real estate company, buying land, holding land, developing land, bringing in a similar model to like a Brookfield, bringing shopping centers, financial districts, and then helping to bring marquee real world businesses to be tenants of our shopping malls and our uh, financial districts and um, entertainment districts and, and stuff. So is the value, in your opinion, in a B2C model? Um, I think the metaverse is certainly a mass adoption opportunity. For us to start, we want to provide B2B2C or B2B even. We don't have the time to be doing one person at a time. We'd rather focus our, our mind share on bringing enterprises, financial institutions, investors, family offices that see the value proposition in the metaverse to enter, bring rock stars to do festivals, mirroring the conferences we're doing online. So there's a stage in the metaverse as well, so people can watch it from a conference center in you know, 3D land, 3D virtual land. But with the intention of um, your time, I think is better spent bringing an organization or a musician or a conference that can bring people or organizations that can bring hundreds or thousands or millions of users uh, at a single you know, at one time. The concepts of blockchain are notoriously hard to absorb. It takes a lot of time for people to wrap their heads around the various implications. They are so manifold and interconnected. And whether it is a, an investment opportunity that you want to syndicate with others that you want to actually involve, or uh, it is uh, an enterprise client that could benefit greatly of a blockchain application. Going beyond the initial contact and then actually closing uh, at the end takes a lot of effort. Do you find that the instinctive relationship we have with 3D spaces makes it so that achieving the same result in a metaverse opportunity is much faster, much easier? Good question. I think it is going to be faster as the metaverse technology gets to the point where we can bring millions of users at one time, which the roadmap to get that is as simple as doing a concert with Bieber or Drake or, or someone similar. I started getting land and talking about the metaverse two years ago, and I would talk to traditional real estate investors about it years ago, and most are, were and, and are uh, a lot more traditionally focused uh, and fiscally conservative as a result of being you know, in the real estate business. So years ago, most didn't get it. And I think that today also, it is speculative enough that many will not get it, but the ones that do get it can continue to do traditional real estate business, that, that makes sense. But it also makes sense to consider that this is a lot, it, you know, it's speculative. So metaverse land might go to zero in a way that 
land in Monaco will certainly not, but putting a couple percent of your portfolio of your of your real estate holdings into the next generation of the next frontier of land, you lose a couple percent of your portfolio. It's it's uh, it's worth the potential of having extremely outsized gains. So now people are really starting to get it. The difference. Yeah. Now now there's people are starting to get it. Wonderful. Michael, thank you very much for the conversation. I'm looking forward to meeting you at the next conference. As you said, the, the beauty and the opportunity of showing up and then soon in a metaverse conference. <laughs> I'm sure we'll, we will be hanging out around the world and in three-dimensional realities. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Cheers.